blessed. I'm so grateful to God that he will always bring us together like this because of what he wants us to know and how he wants us to be prepared for the days to come. Hallelujah. Beloved, I'm preaching on the theme, make every effort to enter or strive to enter. Hallelujah. Make every effort to enter. Or in other words, strive to enter. Hallelujah. We are in the days where it is a serious challenge for many of us to really enter. Enter where? Enter into heaven. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke chapter 13, 22 to 30. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Hmm. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from the east and west, north and south, and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Beloved in the Lord, I don't want anyone to miss it. You see, today we are living our lives like nothing matters. We are living our lives like because we said certain things, we are off to heaven. We are living our lives like nothing really is important except to really get what you want to get in life. Beloved in the Lord, Jesus was traveling. Now, he was going to Jerusalem. And if you look at Jesus closely and carefully, reading the Bible, you will see a trend in his life. You may say, and many people probably say it, it looks like Christians don't have plans. Hallelujah. In this instance, it will look like Jesus doesn't have a plan. It doesn't matter where he's going. Jesus never gets there. He's stopping by the road all the time. You remember when he was going to the same Jerusalem and then Lazarus, uh, sorry, Zacchaeus climbed a tree. Jesus stopped and had dinner with Zacchaeus. Jesus was always stopping by the road. Remember, Jesus was going somewhere 
and Jairus came to tell Jesus, look, my daughter, 12-year-old daughter is dying. So I need you to come to my house. This is an emergency. I said this is what? Yet when Jesus was going, another woman touched her. I touched him. And the woman was healed. Nobody knew it except Jesus and the woman. So, please, just leave it and go. Somebody's daughter is dying. But Jesus would take time off and stop and said, someone touched me. Everybody was looking at his brother or sister. What is this man saying? Look at the crowd. People are pushing you. People are, everybody is doing something. You, you know, you don't even have a place, I mean a space to really move your feet. Yet you are saying somebody touched you. Look, it's not one person touching you. Everybody is touching you. Jesus knew that the people didn't understand. He said, virtue has gone out of me. Other versions say, power has gone out of me. You see, he is so loaded. Anything that goes out of him, he feels it. He knows it. He understands it. Even if he didn't intentionally do it, if you are able to tap something out of him, he knows that something has happened. So Jesus knew and Jesus said that, look, power has gone out of me. Somebody has touched me. You see, there, there's touch and there's touch. There is a touch. He said, this was a faithful touch. A touch from a, I mean, a touch of faith. But as he was speaking, I believe Jairus was angry. You see, Jesus, the problem is that, look at this crowd. People will touch you. My daughter is dying. You see, somebody's problem <laughs> is another person's something. Jairus feels that he has a problem. The daughter is dying. The woman feels that I need my healing. Jesus knows that somebody has touched me. But everybody feels that what he's saying or doing is important. Hallelujah. There are times in our lives like that. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus stopped. And as he stood there, report came that Jairus' daughter is dead. Say a kind. You pastors of today, you bluff too much. If you think it is only today you are hearing that they said the same thing to Jesus. And this guy, and they didn't tell Jesus. They were telling Jairus. Look, leave, leave this man alone. But you know, Jesus knows everything. So as they were telling him, Jesus turned and saw the man. The man's face went like, you see, that was what I was saying. The girl is dying. Instead of you going to touch the girl and healing the girl, look at what you are doing. You are standing in the middle of a lot of people saying that people are touching you. If you are in the midst of a lot of people, what do you think will happen? Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus looked at him and said, only believe. You know, there are times you only have to believe. Every, I mean, whatever you are seeing doesn't look good. But only do what? Now, this, this is not what I'm really, what I'm trying to say is that Jesus was always stopping and then, so on this journey to Jerusalem, he stopped. I said he did what? And when he stopped, can you go back to verse uh, 20, 22? When Jesus stopped, 
23. This young man came and asked Jesus. I mean, we don't know whether, the Bible says someone, whether he's young, old, whatever, we don't know. And he asked, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, is that your business? The number of people who will be saved, is that your business? Are you the one building a house for them in heaven? No, I want to find out. <laughs> Do you realize that we ask questions that are unnecessary? Hmm. What did Jesus say? He said to them, one person asked the question, and Jesus answered. What did he say? Do you realize that Jesus neglected this question? He says, mind your own business. Instead of you finding out how many people will go to heaven, ask yourself whether you will go. Instead of you asking, okay, so will Muslims also go? Is that your business? Are you yourself going? Are you yourself going? Have you positioned yourself well enough to make sure that you are entering? Many of us, are, instead of really asking the right questions, when we get an opportunity to encounter Jesus, we are asking unnecessary questions. Listen, this guy... I don't know his problem. I don't know whether he is the architect in heaven or whether he is the builder in heaven. So he wants to know the number so he can really design the building to be able to accommodate all of them. I don't know. But the problem, my problem is that the number of people going to heaven, is that your business? Many of us are in the same state. Instead of really sitting down, reading our Bible, understanding, and finding out how we can enter, we are not doing that. We are criticizing people, speaking against people, doing all kinds of things, but we have forgotten about our own. You see, eh, even you, you say you go to church, look at what you are doing. Is that your business? What about you? What are you doing? Bible says that try as hard as you can to remove the speck You see, saying it the other way. I said, try and remove what is in your eyes. What is in your eyes? What is it that is in your eyes? Huh? Exactly. The one in the other person is speck. But the big one, the big problem is with you. Instead of you removing that log, you are thinking about somebody's speck. Instead of you thinking about how I can make it to heaven, you are thinking about the number of people. Beloved, if we will begin to think about how we can walk with him, live with him, so we can make it, it will be very useful for us. Because when we get to know that, it will be easy for us to reach out to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when we get to know that, 
we will come to understand that Jesus doesn't want anyone to perish. So everyone has to go. Instead of asking about numbers that are going and everything, let us try to make sure that our minds are set right and we ourselves know where we are going. Then when we know where we are going, we'll understand the one who is taking us there. And we will understand that in his mind, in his thought, in his heart, he doesn't want anyone to perish. Hallelujah. If we will really begin to position ourselves and begin to walk right with him, these, some of these questions we'll stop asking because he will give us answers. So Jesus looked at him and said, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Many people will try. I said many people will do what? But they will not be able to. Because the, the, the door is what? The gate is what? And because the gate is narrow, <laughs> a lot of us will struggle to enter. Hallelujah. You see, many of us are trying to enter. Can you bring me two chairs? Put them here somewhere here. And bring me two more here. Okay, all right. So, can you open this one a little bit? All right, okay. Can you bring me maybe, um, uh, because this is not high, I can't, because I needed a backpack. I needed stuff around me. Okay, you come, you come, you can be my baggage, kind of. Come, come. So, I have all this baggage. Can you open this one a little bit more? It has to be wide. Okay. So, yeah. This road is wide. So, I can take every baggage. And I'll still go through. Hallelujah. We can even dance azonto and we'll still go through. We can even jump. We can do whatever we can we want and we'll still go through. We can fornicate. It doesn't matter. We'll still go through. We can steal. It's big. We can go through. Let's assume this is fornication, this is stealing. I'm still going through. Amen. I can't kill. I can still go through. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the baggage. The road is what? And therefore, I can go through. But then the gate changes. I get another gate. Obi Afro. <laughs> Even me, I can't go through. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, with this one, if I really want to go through, fornication must go. Adultery must go. Then I can go through. If I carry this baggage, there's no way I can go through this one. Because this road is narrow. Come, come. Let's try and see how we can go with stealing and... Uh, you see, you have too many houses. Let's see whether they can go through. No. Okay. I mean, I'm trying, but it's not working. 
Yeah, no, it's it's not possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, okay. If that's the case, then let's go to the other gate. No problem. It's so easy. Hallelujah. I said the road is what? The door is. The gate is. Hallelujah. This one is too narrow. If I have to go through this, I have to make every effort. But in that effort, some things must drop. Some things must drop then I can go through. Because if I don't drop them, but dropping this is not easy. I love this. And because I love this, it's not easy to drop it. I still want to go through it. I've been able to drop uh, fornication. But you see, my money, I need to drop greed. I need to, you see, greed. I need to drop greed. But I still want to go through the gate with greed. Hallelujah. We've been able to drop some stuff. Haven't we? Yeah, but it's still, I mean, it's still difficult. More stuff will have to be dropped. Jesus told the man, he said, go and do what? No, 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 no. He didn't say that at first. He said, go and obey the command. Do this, do that, do that. He said, oh, Jesus, I've passed that one. He says, okay, fine, you've done well. But you are still holding on to something. And that something must also go. Go and sell everything you have. And then come and follow me. Because, you see, what you have is distracting you. What you have is drawing you back. You see, instead of going for prayer meeting, you are thinking about your your container at the port. Instead of you going to uh, uh, Bible studies, because you, you think that there is something in the office that needs to be finished. So you see, there are times you have to drop those as well. Because the gate is narrow. And it is not everything that can go through. You have done well. You've given your life to But there are still stuff around you. Hallelujah. There are still stuff that needs to be dropped. Because, and that is why he says, make every effort. King James says, strive. That's the way King James says it. He says, strive. Strive. Because it is not going to be easy. If anybody tells you it's easy, I don't think he's telling you the truth. It's not, you see, the, when you came to Christ, it was easy to drop some things. But there are some things that after 10 years in the Lord, you are still holding on to them. You are struggling to let them go. So instead of going through, you go, ah, you, you, you hit here. And still you can't go through the door. So you come back. And then, you, you, but when you get here and you see that, you see, there is something missing. You don't want this gate. You want this one. But in fact, you can't go through it with this. Let this go. Hallelujah. You are still holding on. And that is why you are asking unnecessary questions. How many people is not your business? Your business is, how can I get through this? How can I make it? You see, how many people? The the, the, the one thing Jesus wanted him to understand, and all the people around him, was that, look, the question you are asking me, it is not up to you to decide. I can tell you it is 100 people. But the question is that, are you one of the 100? I can tell you it is 1 billion people. But the question is, are you one of the 1 billion? So the number of people doesn't really matter. Whether you are one of them is what matters. So now Jesus says that, 
you have to strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Look, I'm also trying to enter, but I'm unable because unfortunately, I am unable to leave this. I'm still, I've left some stuff, but I'm still holding on to some stuff. And because of the stuff that I'm still holding on to, I am still unable to go through that gate. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, I don't know what you are holding on to. You know, maybe it's not even money. Maybe simply put, it is because somebody has offended you. And you can't let go. So you are holding a grudge against someone. And because of that, you are unable because, you know, when you hold grudges against people, you become big. But the road is, the gate is what? So grudge has made you so big that you can't go through it. Let those things go away so that you become lighter. Then you can easily enter. Hallelujah. There is this, look, there is so much struggle at this gate. Because everyone is struggling to enter. Maybe I, I need, could you come? Yes, come, come, come. You come, Paul, come, 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 come. Maybe I'm not holding to any of them. But we are how many? Four. Everyone wants to go through it. In order to go through it, I may step on his foot. Because if we are not sensible enough to allow each one to go through. Come. Come. We have been able to make it. But we are here fighting against one another. Trying to really make it. But in making it, we are just really, we have so many struggles. I am speaking again. Things are going on. So I don't, you see, we are in church, but I don't agree with him. He doesn't agree with me. But we want to go through the same gate. So we get to the gate. Instead of we being sensible enough to allow one person to go like we did at first. I want to go. He wants to go. Everybody wants to go. The gate is there, but none of us is going through. The gate has not been shut, but our struggles does not allow us to go through. Beloved in the Lord, if we can really begin to, you see, the gate is so, so narrow. I know, I know you want to go. I also want to go. But let's go one after the other. Let's understand one another. Let's, let's agree. And so that I don't even want to go first. You can go first. So you go. And you to go. And you to go. If we can understand one another in the church, if we can agree on certain things, and if we can really say that, look, I want to be the fool amongst them. Everybody should go first. It took us less than one minute for all of us to go through. But we can be at this gate, all four of us, and we can struggle for hours on end, maybe days, maybe years, but none of us will be able to go through. Why? Because we are struggling too much. We are fighting one another. Everybody thinks he's wiser than the other one. And because of that, the gate is there, open, but we can't go through because it's narrow. Let's go there. This is wide. We can fight one another. We can kill one another. Yet, we can cheat one another. Yet, it's possible for us to go through. We are sitting in church, fighting one another. Let me tell you, the door you are going through is not the dark door. You think, yeah, but you see, 
I even slept with his wife, but I still can pray for people. Eh, the gate that you are going through, the gate that you think you are going through is not the right gate. You don't understand that one. Because if it is this gate, with all that kind of confusion, I can't go through. So we are in church, and because we are still seeing some things, we think that everything is fine. Ask yourself, which door am I going through? Which door am I going through? Go to the next verse. Back, back to NIV, please. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Watch it. Those who know they are God, they do exploits. Listen, come. Those who know they are God, they know that in order to go through this, you don't have, you don't have to go with those baggages. In order to go through this, there shouldn't be any conflict amongst us. In order to go through this, there shouldn't be any iota of fornication, adultery, stealing. There shouldn't be these things. If we want to go through this door, because those who want to go through it, they know, they know that this door, these things cannot enter. And the one who is really opening the door for them knows that these ones have spoken to them enough. And they know my word. I know them and they know me. They can hear my voice and they will do what I want them to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, this, we, we come to the gate, but because of our fighting, come, let's, let's fight small. Let's fight small. Everybody wants to go through. Everybody. So we are struggling to go through. We are there struggling. Many of us are struggling in church. We are struggling. We are fighting one another. Instead of going through, we are just, you see, you, 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 you people, you, you don't do a, a too much revivals. Okay. Yeah. Is that your business? Uh, hallelujah. We, we are fighting against one another. You see, you, 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 I, I want to, you, you see, you, you, you're in your church, the drums are not nice. Is that your business? Hallelujah. We are fighting. Instead of going through the gate, we are fighting. And we, 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 we keep fighting and the door is locked. Now, the moment we realize the door is locked, we now began to... In fact, actually... I, 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 one of us began to now decide to kill one, all of us. So he finished us, and then the gate is locked. Now he's knocking. Those who heard my voice, they've already entered. Those who obeyed my word, they've already entered. They probably did not have enough. They probably were a little bit poor. Maybe they had only one house. But they've gone through. You are still there fighting for something you will not take anywhere. Hallelujah. And that gate is locked. Beloved, I said, be careful, the gate is not locked. Before you begin to knock. Be careful. Ah. Go to the next verse. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. Do you know what this means? I was an elder. You know, when, when the, the uh, bishop was coming from America, you see, 
I was the one who really sponsored it. That's fine. You did well. But that's not a license to enter. Hallelujah. Yeah. We sat down with you. If I, at the dinner, I was there. That's fine. <laughs> that's worldly dinner. You can eat. Hallelujah. But that's not the visa to go to heaven. Go back, go back, go back. We drank with you. Beloved, let's get this right. Because this is, this is one of the very important things that we need to understand. Many of us are hanging out with Jesus, but we are not obeying him. You see, <laughs> who do you think the president will invite to his dinner? Yeah. Yeah. Friends, business people, chief executives, party members. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sit and down with him. Do you remember that Jesus' uh, dinner, Judas was there? Sitting down with him at dinner, that, did it qualify him to go? <laughs> Beloved, sitting in church doesn't mean that you are going. I said sitting in church doesn't do what mean that you are going. That's the biggest mistake we are doing. Being close to the pastor doesn't mean anything because the pastor himself may not go. I was at a revival meeting. In fact, when you did a crusade, I was there. That's fine. It's okay to be at a crusade. It's okay to be at a revival. In fact, it's okay to be about at, at every church service. It's fine. That's not a qualification. Hallelujah. You can come here. Every, uh, we come on Sunday. You can be here. You can be here on Monday, House of Peace. You can come to Thursday Bible study. You can come to Saturday dawn prayer. You can go on evangelism on Fridays, but that's not it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you obedient to him? Have you given everything up to him? He says that deny yourself. Have you denied yourself? In John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus made a statement. And he says, I am the gate. The gate we are talking about is Jesus himself. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. You cannot decide which gate you want to go in. There is only one. You have to make a decision that this is the gate. You see, you need to be able to identify the gate. Many people are looking at many gates. Many people think that there are many uh, roads to Rome. But in this instance, there is only one. There could be options, but they don't matter. You can have everything. 
But that doesn't qualify you. You can preach, but that doesn't qualify you. Paul made a profound statement. I don't think people look at it critically. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, he said something that always touches my heart. He says, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. You can preach. You can do miracles. You can be whatever you want to be. But you may be disqualified. And therefore, he said that I, I do what? I strike a blow to my body. I need to really, because there are three things that probably could stop you. It could be the devil. It could be the flesh. Hallelujah. And you see, one thing we need to come to an understanding is that if we are not careful, one of the most dangerous things that really will hold us back is the flesh. The flesh has some demands. The flesh is seeking to please others. So, we want to look nice for who? No, for who? We want people to see us looking good. We want people to see the car we are driving. We want people to really know that we fly first class. We want people, you see, we want people to know. It is, yes, maybe it's the comfort, but most of the time it goes beyond that. We want people to know that, yeah, we, we are there. Hallelujah. The flesh is dictating. The flesh is calling the shots. The flesh is really taking us to places that under normal circumstances we don't have to go. But it, we look, yeah. You see, yesterday, some people, all they want is that when they go to the office, they can talk about the weekend and where they were. Because that's the conversation. That's the conversation at the office. They will go to church all right, but they never go to the office discussing what they, what they learned in church. Hallelujah. It is about, hey, this weekend, what, what, what's up? Where did you go? What, I, I, and everybody is saying something. And therefore, we also want to say something. We want to fit in. We want to be accepted by the people. So we have forgotten that all these baggages won't take us anywhere. We have forgotten that the gate is narrow. We, yes, we are in church. But the baggage we are carrying in church is too much. And because of that, the gate is there. We know the gate is narrow. Instead of putting stuff down so we can enter, we are still really discussing and talking about things that are not necessary. Instead of the guy, that someone, I don't know his name because the Bible never mentioned his name. He said someone asked him, how many people will go to heaven? Are there only a few people going to go? Whether it's a few or it's a lot of people, are you going there yourself? If it is few, are you one of the few? If it is a lot of people, are you one of the lot of people? The question we need to ask ourselves first is that, am I ready to go? Hallelujah. Because if we don't ask ourselves those questions, what is going to happen is that we will struggle, but yet we will never get there. Look, there were two people. One was very rich. One was not rich. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. 
and we'll read only 23 to 26 because you know the story. The Lazarus and the rich man. They all died. One was at the gate of uh, one uh, of the rich man. Lazarus was at the gate of the rich man and he will eat only the crumbs that fall. Dogs will lick his salt and everything. The rich man was good. He didn't suck him. Amen. He didn't suck him, yet he didn't heal his soul. He allowed his dogs to lick. Beloved, we are doing some stuff, but is that enough? Then they all died. Then one ended up in Hades. And the other one ended up in uh, heaven with Abraham. So in Hades, where he was in torment... He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Beloved in the Lord, I want to ask you a question, a very simple one. Who was speaking? Who was telling the story? That's what I mean. Who? (coughs) And Jesus is saying that there's a place where people will be in agony. Why are we afraid to tell people that there is hell? And people will suffer there. Why are we afraid that because people will speak against us and will say that we are judging them, we don't want to tell them the truth. Why? Jesus was willing to let the people understand that there is a place where there is agony. Hallelujah. Don't go ahead of me, please. There is a place That there is suffering. Can you give me your water? Can you pour more to make it full? It's your water so I can touch it. Let me sanitize my hand. This is cold. It doesn't matter when we finish, you can, you can pour it out. Let's assume someone is hungry, uh, uh, thirsty. Who did this work? Okay, all right. No, no, take it out. Yeah. And stand there. No, you stand there. I'll go and sit down. You go and sit down. She's very testy. Very, very testy. Is her test satisfied? Are you satisfied? Yeah, but I thought you said you're testy. I've given you water. You want a drink? She's not in agony. She's not in any fire. She's only testy. And this is not enough. Somebody is in agony. Because I'm in agony in this fire. And all that he wants is... Beloved, today if you have a cup of water, thank God. Listen, we have underrated what is yet to come. And that is why we live our life the way we live. We have not been really told what is coming. 
That is why we live the way we live. There's coming a day you will beg for this. In fact, the Bible says that he was in fire. Let's assume there was fire here. Do you think, and the Bible is saying that there was a chasm between the two. There was a long, I mean like, and therefore by the time he would get there, I believe this will be dry. Hallelujah. Look at where I was coming from. By the time I go here, very short distance, but there is nothing to for her. You want water? Okay. Just a. a Beloved, I want you to understand how it is. You beg for this one day, you will not get it. You, you will feel it. It's not like you are there and you are dead so you don't feel anything. You see, the Bible says that we all rise up. Even if you are dead, you will rise up. This thing that you are polishing every day, you are bleaching it. You are doing what? Giving it Indian, Chinese, and everything. You want to be chocolate. Somebody wants to be coffee. Somebody wants to be what? Fanta. Every, look, and some people, <laughs> the irony of, this, of it these days is that they want their hips to be bigger than what they have, their father in heaven gave, it, gave to them. Hallelujah. And the foolishness of it is that some people say that you have to maintain the body. Is that maintenance? That's the right word, enhancement. So you are wiser than God, eh? God, God knows that that big hip can go through this door. So he gave you one. And because you want to go through this, you just go and enlarge it. Hallelujah. Amen. People need the truth. Too. They need to understand the truth. You see, you can enhance as much as you we want to, but it's, it's not taking you anywhere. The rich man had everything. He had enhancements. He had everything. Yet it got to a point, this is what he wanted. Beloved, think about this in th- those days than thinking about what you can enjoy today. I'm not saying live a strange life, and, but you see, you need to begin to focus. Because a lot of the things you are chasing won't take you anywhere. You may even die tomorrow. I'm not saying you, but you also can die tomorrow. Maybe yours will be today. Maybe I can fall down right now. Where will I be going? Now I have a, I have what, a, 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 a bottle of water, however you want to call it. And I can drink, I can bath, I can do anything with this water. Hallelujah. Amen. But there's coming in. I need to see, this is important today. It's fine. But what I need to think about is that tomorrow, will I have this or I will need this? Having this today and, and not having this tomorrow is the worst thing that can ever happen to you. Someone would have to really sit up and understand that it's not about what you think. There's a time coming. So Jesus says, whatever it takes for you to go through that, what? That narrow gate, that narrow door, do it. We are just worried about too many things. 
things that don't really matter. We have no time for Jesus. We have no time to think about where we are going. We think that everything goes, but not, it's not so. It is not so. Somebody would have to wake somebody up and tell him that, look, I'm telling you this. You will go to hell if you don't live your life for him. Somebody will have to tell somebody that, look, what you are thinking is not the truth. Somebody will have to tell somebody that go read the Bible. Somebody will have to be taught to understand that being too big and too busy will take you anywhere. There's coming a time. Everything you acquired for yourself, it doesn't matter how busy you were, it wouldn't count. Somebody will have to tell somebody that warming the seats on church, uh, in church on Sundays doesn't take anybody to heaven. You see, indeed, Jesus, I mean, uh, um, James wrote that if you hear it and do not do it, you are deceiving yourself. How many of us are deceiving ourselves? We hear it. Because coming to church, we hear. But living your life out there, do you do it? Do you do what you, you heard? So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tape of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. In your lifetime you had ten houses. In your lifetime you had many dogs at home. In your lifetime, you had jacuzzi. In your lifetime, your WC was remote controlled. I don't know what we put inside there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying it's bad. If you can afford it, maybe I yeah, enjoy it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> In your lifetime, you receive your good things. While Lazarus received bad things. But now, I said, but now, and you are, choose this day which one you want. Whether you want the pleasures of this world and be in agony after death. Or you will go through the bad things. You will strive to enter this door. Beloved, entering this door, this narrow door, calls for a lot. It calls for a lot of sacrifice. Because it is only in sacrifice that will make you put certain things away. You see things. You love things. They are there for you. But Bible is saying that if they will help you to go through this door, let them go. Let them go. Because this door, your carpenter can go and change it. I know you are a builder, so you have 10 carpenters. You can call anyone to go and just do anything for you, but they can't touch this door. I know, you, you see, you, you, you invented whatever you invented, but this door, is invented in heaven. Nobody can touch it. You cannot make any amends to this door. It's narrow and will remain narrow. Oh, you want to take everything. So, because you want to take everything, you want the door to be really uh, uh, um, um, adjusted for you. Is that what you want? The most important thing for you to do is to put the things away. Because this door 
cannot be adjusted. It's fixed. You have to put things away. Like the rich uh, young ruler. You have to really go and sell everything and enter. It is better for you to let everything go so you can enter than to carry everything and this door is locked and you will really be in agony. This life we are living doesn't end here. It doesn't. I said it does not end here. Many of us think that it's going to end here. But Paul said that no. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. I think. If it's not that. We'll, we'll. Yes. If only for this life we have hope in Christ. We are of all people most to be pitied. Because life is not ending here. So if you, your hope in Christ is to really, oh my goodness, for you to get breakthroughs and get 10 buildings and get 50 buildings and get every prophecy and get this and get that and get that and get that, I am not angry at you. But I'm telling you that if it is only for, your hope in Christ is for you to acquire wealth. Listen to me carefully. Paul says that, you have to be pitied because that is deception. We, why is it that we have stopped talking about salvation? Why is it that we have stopped talking about heaven and hell? Why is it that we think that we have to make Christianity comfortable for everybody when Jesus said that we will be persecuted? Why is it that we want to modify it so that some people can just really, in the every, they can do everything and still believe that they will go? Why? What's happening? When did the Bible change? Hallelujah. Why are we so eager to be so rich? And I'm not saying getting rich is a sin. But Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. And again, he says that there are two masters. You can't serve both. You have to choose to serve one. We want to serve God, but we still want everything. Hallelujah. And sometimes it doesn't matter how we get it. It doesn't really matter. And we are trying to get everything. Oh my goodness. Beloved in the Lord. It's scary. I said it's scary. It is what? Scary. It's so dangerous the way we are leading people astray. We are intentionally leading people astray. We are drawing people into places we don't have to draw them. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to understand this one thing. If only for this life you have hope in Christ. If only for this life you think your Christianity matters. If only for this life you are so eager to serve the Lord so you can get a breakthrough. You can get whatever you are talking about. I'm telling you, the Bible says that you are of all people most to be pitied. Let us not change what Jesus taught. Let us not make it look like Jesus made a mistake. He didn't. And he makes us understand that we ought to be careful. Beloved in the Lord, I want, I want you to come to that place this morning. A place where you know and you understand that this life you are living is not the end of everything. How are you living your life? 
beloved, maybe, I don't know, but maybe you think that if you get married, everything will be fine. And therefore, every prayer meeting you go, the only thing you need is marriage. And therefore, you will skip Bible study, something that will teach you the way to walk right and live right and make it to heaven to a prayer meeting that promises you breakthrough for marriage. Maybe breakthrough for what? Your next big contract. Yes, having a big contract is fine. But if that is all that your Christianity is about, if that is all that your tithe is about, if all that your money is about, your offering is about, me so in a seed so that, please, you are making a mistake. I said you are making a mistake. And I repeat, you are making a mistake. Hmm. Is that what it is all about? Because if you don't sow, you don't get. Get what? Get to enter the gate. Why have we made everything about money? Why have we made everything in Christianity about money, cash? Why? Where is that coming from? Which part of your Bible? For all I know, my Bible says that in First uh, um, Timothy chapter six, my Bible, my Bible tells me that if I'm so eager for money, I will miss it. I will even wander away from the faith. Hello. Yeah, but why are you preaching like that? What, how do you want me to preach? What do you want me to tell you? What your itching ears want to hear? Okay, then get up. Let me prophesy over you. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah your promotion is coming. You see, since I started preaching, he's never received anything. The moment I said your promotion is coming, he said, I receive it. When I said Lazarus went to heaven, you didn't say, I receive that. Beloved, it's a deceit. The enemy has found... You see, let me tell you this. And, and, and I want you to get this understanding clearly. I am not an advocate of poverty. No. Neither will I stand here and tell you that by all means you have to be rich. Jesus will make you who he wants you to be. Hallelujah. Do you know how the disciples died? Listen to me carefully. Some of them, even after they've been beaten, they've been given the 40 minus one lashes. When they came out, Bible says that they started rejoicing because they've also suffered for the name of Jesus. If they beat you today, you won't come to church again. Even the things I'm saying, you don't want to come to church. Yeah, but even every day when you go, it is hell and heaven and hell. That's what matters. I said that is what matters. It is not in the abundance of your possessions. What matters is where are you going from here? Where are you going from here? I don't want to be in eternal agony. And I, I don't want you to be there. If it is not important, Jesus won't spend time talking about it. Read your Bible. You will realize that the one person that spoke about heaven and hell more than anyone in the Bible was Jesus Christ. He spoke about it. He says, repent or perish. 
If today I tell you repent or perish, you say that pastor is judging me. Hallelujah. I don't know when it became so important for us to get rich and forget about heaven and hell. Even when Jesus said that the rich man went to where? And the poor man went to Yeah, so we all have to be poor so we can go to heaven. Yeah. Me, I'm poor. Me, me, I'm poor. I, I, I don't want, even one city, I don't want to. Hey! I, I'm, I'm poor. I'm poor. You'll be the first to enter hell. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Uncle, I'm poor. Won't you give me something? Auntie, I'm poor. Give me something. Uh, uh, and then auntie says that, wash my car and I will pay you. No, 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 I'm poor. I'm poor. I, I want to go to heaven. So I, I want to be poor. Hey! You will be the first one to... Because you want to take advantage of everybody so that you can go to heaven. We don't go to heaven being poor. We don't go to heaven like that. We go to heaven accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior and living right for him. Hallelujah. That's how we go. So whether you are poor or rich, that what really matters is that did you live your life for him? Hallelujah. Let's get back to what matters. This book. I said, every day I will remind you. It is called, I don't know your own, the, the name. But mine is called the Holy Bible. I said mine is called what? The Holy Bible. Don't put this book down. Stop reading what you are reading. Take this one. Read this one. God will open your eyes. You will see the truth. Everything I'm telling you this morning is in the Bible. Hallelujah. It is here in the Bible. And if you don't want to read it, how would you know that Lazarus ended up in a good place? And the rich man ended up in a bad place? How would you know? How would you know that the, the gate is narrow? Tell me, how would you know that? How would you know that even when Jesus was going to uh, Jerusalem, he still stopped for somebody to ask that, that kind of question. And he had time to answer. Beloved, sometimes we are too big. We have become too big to even answer simple questions. Hallelujah. I, I don't want to say what I wanted to say. Hallelujah. Don't be f too far away. Jesus was not far away. Jesus was close to the people. Sometimes you have to hang out with the people. Jesus hung out with them. He sat down. And the people surrounded him. And he was talking to them. He was chatting with them. And somebody had to really go back, go back to my 13, the Luke 13. Go back. No, 23. Jesus had the time to sit down, to hang out with this guy for this guy to come and ask this question. He came, he said. S someone asked. The guy doesn't even have a name. Nobody knows him. If he was a centurion, they would have said so. If he was a Pharisee, they would have said so. If he was a Sadducee, they would have said so. If he was, he didn't have a name. So they addressed him as what? Jesus could hang out with someone. And you, you are too big to hang out with anybody. Huh? You are too big. Sit down. Let the people come, 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 come and talk to me. But don't come and ask me this question. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So the questions, they are selective. This one, no, no, don't ask me this one. 
Jesus was ready for every question. I said Jesus was what? Ready for every it, can, it, can, it can be seriously a foolish question. But so, Jesus, do you know Jesus ignored this? He says, someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, listen to the answer. How many people will go? It's not your business. Are you going to enter? Are you, you, you? You are asking me how many people will enter. Only a few. Whether it's a few or whether it's a lot, that is none of your business. Your business is, are you entering? Are you going in? And Jesus told them, go back, go to the next verse. Quickly, I'm, I'm just ending. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you see, instead of you asking unnecessary questions, you need to get focused. Because by the time you finish asking the questions, the door is locked. Instead of you getting your act together so you can enter, you are asking, eh, so it means if I can't get rich, I can't get to heaven. Just ask yourself, are you on the right path? Stop asking those questions. Hallelujah. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, say, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then they think Jesus is making a mistake. So they go like, yeah. But then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. Yes, he came to do crusading on, on your streets. And in fact, when he finished, he hung out with people and he ate with you. That's fine. But that doesn't take you anywhere. Hallelujah. Let's hear what Jesus said. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Which street are you talking about? Are you sure you sat down with me? Are you sure you ate with me? Hallelujah. And you are still doing evil. Listen, watch this closely. Now, Jesus is relaxed. And he's talking to the guy. And he says that, yeah, maybe, uh, I, 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 maybe, yes, that's what you think. But for me, I don't know you or where you come from. And he says, do what? Away from me. All you, he didn't say those who hung out with me. So you can hang out with him, but still be evil. And Jesus doesn't recognize you. You can be the pastor and still be evil. You can be the elder and still be evil. Let us not only think about the congregation. Pastors, we must think about ourselves first. That's why Paul said what he said in 1 Corinthians 9.27. He says, I, I don't want to make that mistake so that after I preach to people, I will miss their prize. No, I don't want to do that. I'm thinking about myself as well. I will preach, but I'll watch my life. The fact that I preach doesn't make that automatically I'm going to heaven. Some people just want to prophesy. Some people just want to preach. Others just want to be elders of the church. That doesn't take anybody to heaven. It doesn't. You didn't sit with Jesus. This ones they sat with him. Live. Yet they missed it. Hallelujah. And he says there will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourself thrown out. You see them. How would it feel? Come, come. How, how would it feel when we all, yeah, but church was good. Yeah, you see, yeah, we, we did very well. Yeah, I think we preached. We did all that we needed to do. Yeah, church, church was good. Yeah, don't you think so? Yeah, it was powerful. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was nice. You know, I was holding Jesus' jacket. That was, I mean, that, that was interesting. Yeah, it's a great privilege. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. 
And, and you see, the day, the day Abraham came, I was there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did you see him? You shake hands with him. Okay. That's, that's nice. Don't you think that was really? That was, that was great. That yeah. Was and then uh, 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 Abraham come. Abraham come. Abraham come. <laughs> Abraham come. Then Abraham goes through the door. Go through the door. Then Ab- Abraham goes. Okay. Yeah. Peter. Peter come. Peter come. <laughs> then Peter goes through. Yeah. You see. Yeah. You see. You see. I was with them. You see how they are going through. Then you go. Then they throw you out. And then you also go. It doesn't matter whether you stay with Abraham. <laughs> but me, I'll go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. How painful will it be to get to the gate and thrown out? And you see people going through, yet you are not. You are thrown out. How painful will that be? The worst part is that the guy living on your street that you always look down upon gets there with all your jacket and he comes with, with no jacket. I want Chalote. Does anybody, is anybody wearing Chalote here this morning? Yeah. And then, and then with, with all this, you know, go through. And then she goes through. And then I said, but how did she get inside? Is that your business? When, when Jesus was saying that, think about yourself, you were there busy condemning people, saying all kinds of things against people. Very few people are going. No, you see, the guy living in the street corner, you never know how much he cries to the Lord. And you think that because he still has only a bicycle and you have a V8. You think that, <laughs> oh my goodness, Lord, just let me say this. Let me tell you, you think, you come with your t-shirt, come. Yeah, you, you come, 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 come quickly. Come, run. You think, but you are too tall. <laughs> I have to go like this. You think he wearing t-shirt and everything, and he sits in church with you with all your yellow <laughs> buttons. You think that this one, he doesn't have breakthrough. You have breakthrough. Because today, we think that when you buy V8 in the church, and your offering is big, and your whatever is whatever. You think you are the one going to heaven. But you don't know this, this one. How he's waiting before the Lord. How? Listen, 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 listen. He even, even doesn't want to lie. He struggles to lie. You, it's your food. You eat it every day. Your business is so corrupt. And you, because you, you, you go and pay and get the contract, you come and say, hey, I got a breakthrough. What breakthrough? Where, where did it come from? Where did it come from? You went and paid bribe and they gave you contract. You say it's breakthrough. Who gave you? It's devil's breakthrough. It's not from Jesus. Jesus doesn't want you to pay bribe to get breakthrough. Hallelujah. Stop doing that. This one with his t-shirt is always crying. He goes to construction sites to work. He doesn't want, and because he is like this, you think you have breakthrough, you are closer to God. And unfortunately, we pastors, we have made it look like you are not paying tight enough. You are not sowing seed enough. What seed will he sow? It's two copper coins he will sow. Two copper coins. That is what he will sow. Because that's what God has given to him. Hallelujah. Don't judge people by how much money they have. Don't judge people by wearing t shirt Don't judge them in that way. They will go to heaven and you with your suit. You, you will determine where you will go. Let us begin to be normal. And get closer to Jesus. Let us... St- the, look, let me tell you. There's too much noise. I said there's too much what? They did not do so. The noise is too much. It looks like if you wear a t-shirt, you are not going anywhere. 
it looks like this guy is always fasting and praying. And he's waiting before the Lord. And, see, I mean, he's not even, he goes to the work site. It's, it's just a construction site. I don't know where you work, but just let me use you like that. Yeah. But he goes to the construction site. And a hammer hits somebody's hand. And he lays hands on it. He prays and immediately he's healed. But it's not on TV. It's, this is not on TV. He, he, he goes to construction site. A woman is passing with a son or daughter. And you look at them and they don't have anything to eat. Because he's not sitting in a car. He identified them. He gave them food to eat. Jesus is watching. He comes to church. And because he works at a construction site, nobody cares about his life. Everybody thinks that this one, even his offering is too small. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I don't need to see your offering. Where is the offering bowl? Bring it. Bring the offering bowl. When you are bringing your offering, it's even in an envelope. I am here. I don't see. Jesus, in his time, he stood here. When you put him, he looks at you. Eh, mama salai, mama. No, 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 you don't worry. You just put something. If you want to come, come. Yeah, but my t-shirt guy that hasn't come, come. Come and put your offering. The moment he put his offering, Jesus looked at him and said, this is what I want. This is what is acceptable to me. He gave everything. He gave everything. And it's from here. These ones, they gave, they have 10,000 at home. They came to tip Jesus 20 CDs. This one, he had only 10 CDs. He gave five CDs. Or maybe he gave all the 10 CDs. Or maybe he had two CDs and he gave it all. Beloved, let us not begin to look down on those who gave two CDs. Please, I am sad. I am. We've turned the Christianity into something else. We have made the door too wide. But it's narrow. We are determining who will, I mean, it's not even, we don't even talk about heaven. We don't even talk about hell. We're talking about how much money you can make here. Listen to me. I am not against you having more money. No, I am not against it. If you work, if God really blesses you and you have more, we thank God for your life. We honor God for your life. But all the things, all the noise needs to stop. It needs to stop. Something has to give way. Something has to give way. It is important to understand that some people will be thrown out. I don't want you to be one of them. Hallelujah. Can I read the last two verses and then I'll close? People will come from the east, west, north, south, and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. There will be those sitting, they, they, they never get the front seat. They never get, they, they always are out there. 
but they will make it. I said they will make it. I said they will make it. Beloved, this morning, I just want you to know that Jesus is coming for his own. He is. And he says that some people will think that they know him and he knows them, but he doesn't know them. He doesn't. He's looking for those who are obedient to him, who are willing to let go of everything that holds them back, those who are ready to let the baggages go and look up to him. I don't know where you stand. I don't know your mindset about Christianity. I don't know what you are thinking. But it is not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, who will enter. It is only those. I said it is only those. Only those who are doers. Those who will do what God wants them to do.